order for you, Sam. For me? Yeah, looks important, too. Mm-mm, from my draft board. What's it say, Sam? Yes, give us the lowdown. It's probably about my deferment. Order to report for induction the President of the United States to Samuel Wellington Williams. Greetings. Having submitted yourself to the Army the report, Federal Building to this ain't no deferment, this is preferment. I'm reporting tomorrow, Bo. Wow. Yes, that means I'll have to get me another porter. Hello, Mr. Jeffries. Morning, Max. Hi, Mr. Jeffries. Hi, Sam. Hate to lose you, Sam, but the Army needs men like you. Polish off a few jobs for me, Sam. <laughs> I'll polish them all. Just give me a gun and plenty of ammunition, and I'll fix them. That's the stuff. Good boy, Sam. But, Sam. If all the boys shoot stuff away like you're going to, the fellas that are making it had better get in there and pitch. A lot of people talk about an offensive in 1943. But me, I want some action now. How are we going to get it? I'll tell you. First, we got to turn out the stuff. My boyfriend says we'll lose this war if we don't get busy pretty soon. There you are, Mr. Thompson. Anything else? Yeah, trim it a little around the edges. Okay. Well, you're not the only people who think the stuff isn't being turned out fast enough. Every time the phone rings at the factory, I know what the guy on the other end's going to say. Oh, I wasn't talking about your place, Jim. I can see the light shining in your place at all hours of the night. But you're only one. Not a very big one, either. We're not bragging. Yet. But we're making a mistake along with the rest of the plants. Change for a 20 max, my friend? Wow, where are you getting all these? Fourth one today. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help you. Hey, you must be selling a lot of meat. I'll say we're really busy. Paul the butcher isn't making that mistake. He's slicing a lot of meat. And he's telling the world about it. I don't get you. It's like this. The plants that have war orders are too busy building the stuff to tell the people what's actually going on. The people have heard too little, too late, so often. They think it's true everywhere. The people don't have any confidence. That's because they don't know the facts. Facts? Nuts. Jim, you're not going to tell me we're rolling it off at the peak. <laughs> that won't wash. Well, we're not at peak, but we're way ahead of schedule. Gosh, that ain't what I heard. Well, only yesterday I heard a fellow say... My saying boyfriend that... says we're behind on all those defense orders. Just what I was saying. People think so because they don't know. Take our place, for instance. Actually, we're way ahead. Practically all the plants got off wrong like we did. Here we were with contracts for things we'd never made before. What do you do next? You make them. And quick. That's what we thought, but not for long. It wasn't any trick for the automobile companies to change over from commercial trucks to jeeps and stuff like that. But when it comes to tanks and anti-aircraft guns and things you've never seen outside a newsreel, <laughs> you've got something. You got Let me talk to me. Because the big outfits... Yeah, mainly. <laughs> Maybe you have got something at that. Oh, but shucks. What's so tough about tooling up and going to work on the new stuff? Here's what. Take automobiles, for example. You've got the plant all set up to make passenger cars. Your man comes back from Washington all covered with smiles and planks down in order for tanks. So instead of making wheels, you've got to make caterpillar treads. Only you've got to buy or build the machines to do it with first. Yeah, but you can stamp out bodies on a press. Sure, but tank armor plates are horse of another color. There's tempering, riveting, welding, machining, cutting. And even the engine's different. And it's put in different. You got to put in all new machines to do those things? Sure, I get that. But they give you plans and blueprints and all that. The government does along with the order, don't they? <laughs> Anybody ought to be able to follow a plan. Not so easy, Jeff. Take an airplane. Everybody knows, of course, that we're producing scads of planes and a lot of other things you don't hear so much about. But here's the way you have to start on plane production. And most of the new stuff that you have to keep popping to win a war like this one. Now take an airplane. 
you have to make everything for the first one by hand. Then you test the design. After that, the Army or Navy tests the first finished plane. Even then, usually something has to be changed. I suppose. Say, some of those new planes sure are slick. My boyfriend's trying to get into the Air Corps. Hello, Lala, honey. This is Sam. There are thousands of I can't take you out tomorrow night. I got a date. Huh? No, this day is with my Uncle Sam. You have to go through most of those steps with every new model on anything bigger than a clothespin. Yeah, maybe, but there's a lot more comes first when you want to make a whole lot of anything and quick. Those chairs were made in the chair factory, weren't they? Sure, where else? But what if that chair factory got an order for barber chairs like this? This is different from most chairs. First, you'd have to get the machinery to build the gadget that lifts and lowers the chair. Then you'd have to get some machinery to make the parts for this tilting business. <laughs> then you'd have to figure out tools that'll turn out swivels good and fast. Well, <laughs> I sure got around. <laughs> but you're overlooking the fact, Jim, that you'd still be making chairs. There are a lot of things alike as well as different. Now look, Jeff, take a look at these two chairs. You gotta admit, they're not as much alike as they're different. And the stuff they're made out of. Instead of bent tubing and leather, you got iron castings, porcelain, and even some machine steel parts. That all takes long, hard work. Well, goodbye, honey. Yeah, those different materials, they would make a difference. All right. Okay. Well, Jim, about here we're ready to go into production. I'm beginning to see what eats up the time. Now we got plans okayed, machines okayed, and we got the material. Let's go to town. But you can't go to town yet. Say, hey, what is this, a slowdown? What more do you want? Don't tell me we've got to wait for the right moon phase. You've got to teach the men who made those chairs to make barber chairs. Here, I'll show you with this hat. Oh, that's my new hat. Don't try to make a barber chair out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose Madam Queen, or whatever her name is, over on 2nd Avenue that made this hat, got an order for steel helmets for the Army. You can see she'd have to make some changes. She'd have to hire new people, and she'd have to train some of the old ones to do new things. So you see, you've got new products to make, new customers to make them for, new materials to work with on new machines, and you've got men to train to run the machines. It's a handful, but we can do it. I heard a fellow say he's worked around machines for five years. He can run any of them. Maybe he can run them, but running them right is something else. Uh, lend me those clippers a minute. Hey, what are you going to do? I've been working around machines for 20 years. I can run any of these. I'll show you. Oh, no, you don't. No, not on my hair. What do you know about cutting hair? I know how to run these clippers, don't I? Yeah, I get what you mean. You see, Vince, Jim means that when your Uncle Sam wants a job done, he wants it done right. Yeah. It's being done right, and it takes time. But don't get the idea the stuff isn't rolling. Remember what the president said about Uncle Sam already spending at the rate of a hundred million dollars a day on this war? That's a lot in anybody's language. But before this war is over, we've got to double it. Make it two hundred million dollars a day. Double the avalanche of war materials to back up our men at the front and to keep our allies in there fighting. We've got to do a lot more on the engineering, planning and testing we've been talking about. But the biggest part of that's already done. Production is rolling, and every day new production lines are swinging into action, making things faster, faster and better, producing more for victory. Thank you, Miss Clark. Bye, Bobby. Bye. Nice kid. His dad's a second lieutenant now. Oh, I hadn't heard Walt had his commission. Well, Sam, I won't be seeing you for a while. No, sir, but it sounds like we're going to have plenty of that stuff we're going to need. I'm sure glad I heard you tell about that. 
Good luck, Sam. Thank you. Eli's Bob Shop. Hello? Oh, man there? Ain't you heard? It's all over town. You is talking to Private Samuel Wellington Williams. That's right. 